This is the Ukrainian Mechanized Infantryman, the muscle of the mechanized troops that engages and destroys the enemy via close combat. The mechanized troops are Ukraine's regular infantry branch, represented on their berets by two crossed wheel lock muskets and a bursting bomb. Their tactical arm patch is an olive shield with a blue trident, not to be confused with the similar territorial defense patch which has battlements. The basic soldier earns a salary of 13,244 hryvnia a month, equivalent to 358 US dollars as of late 2022. But volunteers are now earning an additional 30,000 hryvnia a month in wartime pay, and up to 100,000 hryvnia a month if they participate in combat, proportioned to the amount of time they spend on the front line. In other words, the Ukrainian private engaged in continuous combat operations earns about as much monthly as an American sergeant. The basic combat unit of the Ukrainian mechanized infantry is the nine-man squad. Each squad is mounted in either a BTR armored personnel carrier or BMP infantry fighting vehicle, mostly Soviet vintage BMP-1 and BMP-2 IFVs, or BTR-70 and BTR-80 APCs, with a smaller number of indigenously upgraded versions like the BTR-4. The 92nd Mechanized Brigade is known to have BTR-4s for example. Ukraine has also received infantry carriers as foreign aid, like about half a battalion's worth of Slovenian BVP M80As operated by the 24th Mechanized Brigade, and Dutch YPR-765 APCs that outfitted the 5th Reserve Tank Brigade's Mech Battalion in May. There are more of course, but not always with the Mechanized Brigades. For example, the French VABs used by the 46th Air Assault Brigade are out of scope for this video, as are the Humvees the 58th and 59th Motorized Brigades have been using to recreate Generation Kill. As for the squad, each has a squad leader, senior rifleman, sniper, RPG-7 gunner and assistant gunner, one or two machine gunners, a driver, and a gunner for the vehicle. The Ukrainian Army's standard issue service weapon is the AK-74, but depending on the unit, the driver and RPG-7 gunner may be armed with the shorter AKS-74U carbine, although this seems to vary. The senior rifleman is also armed with a GP-25 underbarreled grenade launcher, similar to Russian practice. Most squads in a platoon are meant to have two RPK-74 light machine guns, one RPG-7 rocket launcher, and one SVD marksman. However, one of the platoon's three squads has a PKM belt-fed machine gun team in lieu of the RPKs, and one squad per platoon will have a medic rifleman in lieu of an SVD. So the platoon in total has four RPKs, one PKM, two SVDs, and three RPG-7s. Disposable AT munitions like RPG-22s and donated M72 laws, AT-4s, M141s, N laws, and other systems have also been made available. In this regard, with the exception of the more capable systems that have been donated like the N law, there isn't really a big difference between Ukrainian and Russian squads in terms of capability, although the Russians generally have a larger share of PKP general purpose machine guns rather than RPKs. As for Javelin missiles, while the US Army uses them as platoon or squad weapons, pretty much no other military can afford that. The Ukrainian Research Center for Missile Troops and Artillery has published a TTP document stating Javelins should be centralized in a battery, either part of a brigade's anti-tank battalion or directly under brigade control. Each battery would have three platoons, with three squads of three Javelin teams each. It can either act as an anti-tank reserve for the brigade commander, or attach its platoons to mechanized battalions. From there, a platoon either acts as the battalion's own anti-tank reserve, or attaches its squads to the mechanized companies. That's more or less one javelin team per infantry platoon. It should be noted that the crews of the more capable anti-tank systems like javelin traditionally branch artillery. This is supported by photos of soldiers with artillery patches training on Javelin immediately before the war. The N-Law, by contrast, seems to be used more by infantrymen. More recently, in August, Ukraine put out a video on Facebook covering the 87th Anti-Tank Artillery Battalion of the Reserve 45th Artillery Brigade, referencing their use of the Javelin, Stuchna, and the older Rapira anti-tank guns. 
This level of centralization makes sense from a training, accountability, and flexibility perspective. With a limited number of javelins available, it wouldn't make sense to try and give every infantry platoon its own organic javelin team. It's more economical to attach them where they're needed. But back to the platoon, in addition to three squads, there's a platoon commander, an assistant platoon commander who ride with the squads. Each mechanized company has three of these platoons. Companies mounted on BTRs also have an anti-tank platoon with 17 personnel, three BTRs, and three Matisse anti-tank guided missiles. BMP companies don't have this platoon as BMPs themselves can mount ATGMs. In the company headquarters, one vehicle carries a company commander, deputy commander, senior technician, company sergeant major, medical instructor who's usually an NCO, an SBR-3 radar operator, senior driver, an APC gunner. This makes for a total of 112 personnel in BTR companies and 95 in BMP companies. Overall, very Soviet in structure. One level above, mechanized battalions have three mechanized companies, but there are some differences between BTR and BMP battalions. A BTR battalion will have supporting it a mortar battery with six 120mm mortars, an automatic grenade launcher platoon with six AGS-17s, an anti-tank platoon with four ATGMs and two SPG-9 recoilless rifles, an anti-aircraft missile platoon with nine IGLA manpads, a reconnaissance platoon with one BRM and two BMP-2s, an engineering and sapper platoon which includes a PZM-2 earth mover, signals platoon, supply company, and battalion medical center. Note that although the Ukrainians call it a supply company, it's equivalent in capacity to a Russian battalion material support platoon. In it, 48 personnel man 8 cargo trucks, 6 fuel tanker trucks, 1 water tanker, 4 pack 200 field kitchens, different types of mobile repair shops, and 1 Brahma 2 armored recovery vehicle. The battalion as a whole has around 600 soldiers and 45 BTRs, in addition to other supporting vehicles. The BMP battalion, meanwhile, lacks the anti-tank platoon and generally has 40 BMPs and about 520 people at full strength. These battalions fight as battalion tactical groups reinforced with assets from their parent brigades. Three mechanized battalions form the core of the separate mechanized brigade. Brigades that existed before 2022 have also had one motorized infantry battalion since 2016, which were converted from the first territorial defense battalions formed in 2014 so the army could more closely plan their activities. But brand new brigades and reserve brigades that are now engaged in combat don't necessarily have it as standard although some have also integrated new separate rifle battalions that were formed in the early weeks of the war for national defense. The pre-existing 72nd Mechanized Brigade has the new 48th Separate Rifle Battalion for example, so in some cases, Mechanized Brigades are running 5 infantry battalions. Mechanized Brigades also have a 1 tank battalion. The closest thing to standard the Ukrainians have is the T-64BV and its upgraded versions, although some brigades operate T-72s, both T-72s the Ukrainians had on hand and ones that have been donated. Notionally, this would allow for each mechanized battalion to be reinforced by a tank company, but since they're a brigade asset, they can be weighted to wherever they're needed most, whether that's as a brigade reserve, having more than one tank company support by fire during a battalion assault, or itself acting as a spearhead in an attack. Supporting these maneuver battalions is a brigade artillery group. Generally, this group is of regimental size, including a control and recon battery, two self-propelled howitzer battalions for providing direct support to the first echelon BTGs, and a rocket artillery battalion. Overall, this is about the same setup as a Russian brigade. As well, an anti-tank battalion armed with towed MT-12 anti-tank guns and ATGMs is also there to act as a separate anti-tank reserve. Brigades also have an anti-aircraft missile battalion as standard, as well as smaller subunits. These include engineer, maintenance, and logistics battalions, sniper, reconnaissance, electronic warfare, radar, NBC defense, signals, and medical companies, 
and a Commandant platoon which provides security to Brigade CPs. And at the highest level, Brigades are administratively under geographically based operational commands, North, East, South, and West. However, these operational commands have been known to task organize intermediary operational tactical groups to tighten command and control for certain areas. For example, on April 14th, Major General Nestorenko took command of Operational Tactical Group Sumi, consisting of two of the new rifle battalions raised for the defense of Kyiv, the 116th and 117th Territorial Defense Brigades, and units of the Border Guards, Police, and National Guard. They're now responsible for the defense of Sumy, Poltava, parts of Kharkiv, and the Cherkasy region. Before we close out, I just want to remind everyone that we have a charity shirt featuring the Ukrainian mechanized infantry linked in the description. All profits from that shirt go to the medical aid stream of United 24. And if you like this info and want a similar look at Ukraine's tank units from crew to brigade, check out our earlier video on just that. We'll see you over there.